Well, we're starting the morning off with some problems, unfortunately. Uh, we're at the new feed mill setup. Got this thing running at the end of last summer. It's been doing pretty good, but it has not been without its hiccups. We've had a few problems with it. And this morning we got another one. So um, all things considered though, this thing is saving us some money by feeding oats instead of barley. And uh, we also are feeding some screenings. So a guy went and cleaned his grain for seed and we got the leftovers and we're able to feed that still. Makes good cow feed, but you gotta be able to feed it. So anyway, um, the oats, they come into one of these bins from the drag, go into the hammer mill, from the hammer mill into this red grain leg and then into one of the storage bins. And the problem we got this morning is for some reason, the oats, once they're hammer milled and fill up the bin, they're not activating the auto shut off. So when a bin gets full, it's supposed to sense and uh, activate a trigger. And that's gonna slowly shut things off in a sequence. It'll shut the drag off and then it'll shut the hammer mill off and wait 30 seconds or so. Shut the auger off, wait a bit longer, shut the grain leg off. And that way everything has time to empty out but for some reason, like I said, the oats, they just are not activating that auto shut off and now everything's full. Uh, completely smoked the belts on the auger. So this is the auger that comes out of the hammer mill, puts it into the green leg. And yeah, these belts are just completely smoked because this thing didn't shut off when everything else quit. And once a belt starts slipping, it starts burning. She's right full too. It'll take some time for that to flow out. We're filling the feed wagon now. So this bin should slowly go down and then that pipe will empty out. Just opened up the hammer mill. Yeah, it was all packed in there. Bin switch, the full bin switch didn't turn off the system. Yeah, it's packed in there heavy. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of uh, oats that haven't been much through yet. Safety first. We've got the hammer mill cleaned out, but there's a magnet for all the grain that's fed into the hammer mill to stop any no nails or bolts or whatever. See all the crap on there. Are those are all nails? Yeah, all wires. With a chunk like that, with really small chunks. Like even a bolt. Oh. We can reuse, I guess. Yeah, that still looks good. You gotta wash the pennies as a dairy farm. Yeah. So you can imagine if a bolt like that tries to get pushed through the uh, the screen, it just wrecks it completely. Yep, it does. But the big thing is on here for cows, like if they eat a little sliver like this, gets in their stomach, cuts through the stomach, gives them a hardware disease, they call it. And that's what kill it. That's why we give magnets to all the cows, but one thing is preventative, and this is one of the things. Cool. Well, we got that bin set up figured out. Luckily, everything kind of started up even though it was full of grain. And uh, as soon as we emptied that bin down a little bit, we could just run it through and uh, get everything emptied out. The only thing we kind of lost there was the two belts on that auger. So now we're gonna get stuff ready for liquid manure hauling. Uh, unfortunately, our Bueller Versatile, the tractor that we like to put on the liquid manure pump at the pit, she's kind of out of commission. She's getting a little R&R in the shop had to get a seal done on the brakes so we might need to grab the feed wagon tractor put that on the pump you need actually quite a bit of horsepower to run that thing so then we'll put this in front of the feed wagon steal the feed wagon tractor so uh, we've got to make sure this thing starts we checked the oil already but uh see if she fires up after probably six months at the shop Like that, just fired right up. It's always good to see. Um, I was gonna park it outside and let it run for an hour or so in case those batteries were weak, but I don't see the need in that if it fired up that quickly. Next thing I'm gonna do this morning is try and lower our curtains a little bit on the freestall barn. 
This is another thing for our summer ventilation, although we might run into some problems because these curtains were always leaking a bit of air throughout the winter. They were a little too far off of the barn. So what I did last fall to seal these up properly is I pushed those bottom rails inward, which might have put a little bit too much pressure between the panel here and the liner and the rest of the barn. So we're gonna try lower them. I expect them to get hung up there though, unfortunately. We might have to wait for all this snow to melt. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna lower them about an inch or two and then we'll stop it, come back to the front here and see how they're looking. Okay, we got the curtains lowered down a little bit, about a foot, and you can see that curtain is pretty crooked. The right side of it got hung up there. Uh, we'll try and pull that down from the outside, but for the rest, they're looking pretty good, and I think that's as far as we're gonna open them for now. I also, at the back of the barn, turned two of the exhaust fans on, just so I can pull some air through. You do not need a lot of those exhaust fans at the back of the barn on until it gets like above plus 25 degrees Celsius. Well, we found why. Yikes. That'll do it, I guess. That makes sense. There we go. That's not so healthy for the panel there, I don't think, but good thing we caught it on time. If you would lower the whole thing down, it'll snap somewhere in the middle. Make sure the wire's still on all the pulleys. Should be good. And the spot that I was worried that was pressed a little too hard seems to be fine as well, so. This afternoon I got some heifers to AI. I just dumped some grain in front of them that's soaked in molasses, so it's the good stuff. You can see this is still a new group though because they don't all know the night grain is there. They're still kind of hanging around, but uh, eventually they're gonna make their way over to those head lockers. I locked them, so they will lock up. And we got three ladies we gotta breed this afternoon. I got the clips, so I will put the clips on top of their heads, and that way I know which cow it is from behind when I come to breed them. Um, one kind of interesting thing I saw here with a pepper, she's been eating the hemp straw and it's caught in her mouth. Hemp we know is a really tough fibrous straw and uh, kind of just hangs up in their mouth. This is covered in crap, I don't know why she put it in her mouth, but uh, that is crazy. Again, I'm not looking forward to spreading those packs over the field putting them through the vertical beat as the manure spreader, but we'll see how that goes. Curls are an absolute mess right now too. Uh, cows are laying in the mud. Not much you can do, I guess. Um, they choose to lay in the mud. You can see it in this, in this curl over here. We've got a lady laying in front of the pack and there's still quite a bit of clean straw over there. Just on the ground in the mud. There's quite a few ladies doing that. Sucks for the cows that the curls are so muddy. But uh, it'll only be maybe two weeks tops and we'll be in here with the loader cleaning them out. The other really unfortunate thing about the curls being this muddy is I need to walk behind all these young, somewhat crazy heifers to breed them, which uh, is not a good mix with all the slop there. Looks like we got another one. At least that stuff's clean. 
two of the three I need are just not locking up yet. So we'll come back here in half an hour or so and hopefully they'll be locked up then. In the meantime, I think I wanna get the liquid manure spreader hooked up to the MX-285 and get that thing rolling. MX-285 and the Gia manure tank behind it sitting there looking good. It looks like it's hooked up already, but it's actually not. They're just parked in front of each other. Really close though, so that's gonna make hooking this sucker up a little bit easier, I hope. I'll have to lift this guy up a little bit, but uh, we'll check the oil in the MX-285, get it fired up, let it warm up for a little bit. Gotta make sure we got the hydraulics hooked up properly for the steering. So I always just drive around the yard, figure that out real quick, make sure the wheels are turning properly. Try and get those settings figured out. Better to do it than when you have a full tank on there. And then I think we're gonna try clean the inside of this tank out. We do have a little bit of sand buildup in there, unfortunately. Looks like it's spinning freely to me. We got her backed up to the water spout that we fill the feed wagon with. You can see it barely fits. But that'll put a good amount of water in this tank. And then this is the actual pipe that pumps the manure from the PTO pump at the front over top of the tank and sprays it out the back. There is a valve here for recirculation. So this is a hydraulic cylinder and it'll switch a valve in here. Normally when you're emptying the tank, it goes around, but this valve will divert it straight into the tank and it should agitate it up. And this is a little bit warmer water, stuff that's frozen in there, any sand buildup, hopefully it'll recirculate and recirculate and eventually clean itself out. I'm gonna be really surprised if that works perfectly. So we might have to grab the fire hose and spray in there through these holes we got the doors opened up on top. There's four of those doors. We might just need to, you know, fire hose away at the sand in there too. Definitely do not want to be climbing in this tank. I guess we should probably go see if those heifers are locked up now. Well, we checked and those two other stubborn buggers did not lock up yet. So we're just gonna AI the one this afternoon, I guess. Uh, like I said, they've been in here for just a couple of days and they're still really getting used to those head lockers. Although there's a pretty good line up there, but the two that we need are literally standing right over there, unfortunate is what it is. I'm gonna go breed that heifer. Hopefully we don't get absolutely coated by this muck that's on the ground there. Let these ladies go. You always wanna make sure that nobody got hung up in the meantime because those uh, collars sometimes get hooked on the bottom of these self lockers. Double check everyone's free to back out if they want. Excellent. Well, that was very successful. I think we filled the tank up at least one third or so. And we're gonna drive it out to the field now, get this thing recirculating and see if it cleans it out at all. Okay, well, we turned it on. I do not like the looks of that at all. Looks like she's leaking a bit. Try and see where it's coming from. Yikes. We're done agitating, agitated for about 20 minutes and I don't think we're gonna get any more sand mixed up in there uh, if we mix any longer. So we'll go ahead and dump this load. Oh, 
home on top of the tank, looking in there to see if that made a difference with our sand buildup. I'd love to tell you guys it did, but I can't even see because it's so foamy in there that uh, I can't see the bottom. So we're just gonna have to wait and see tomorrow and uh, see if we need to do some more work on that or not. We're gonna go put bedding in the corrals. Uh, just, just the one corral with the tiniest heifers. It's just a little too muddy in there for them. Those hemp straw bales always take forever to shred out and I see one of our favorite cows laying here. Let's see if uh, we can sit on her back, just chill and wait. Hey Cheetah, it's okay. Oh, that's a good girl. Hey. Why'd you have to stand up? I thought we were just chilling. It's hard work, eh? a good cow right on folks uh that is gonna be it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below check out the instagram at sass dutch kid and i hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching